Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Yeah, all right, we're coming <laughs> in with the Kings of Napa season yeah. one, episode six. Mo bottle blues, and baby. It was, and was definitely a whole lot of blues too, bro. Woo! We Man. got whole, look, I don't know how long we're gonna run this because we got some scenarios and some topics that we want to integrate into this here. Man. Because it was a lot. But first of all, we started off, we see Bridget in the back of a police car, right? And then we see her mom on the ground in convulsions and foaming at the mouth. And I said, this is clearly a dream. Like, because we come from off of last week where Dana is sitting there watching his wife and Bridget kissing. Then we pick up where Bridget is in the back of a police car. I said, clearly, like, what the hell? this has to be a dream. Well, we fast forward backwards, like Stanley would say, fast forward backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was six hours um, earlier. earlier. And... We see that everybody is at the house. You know, of course, August is trying to do her thing. Her and Dana are still at each other's throats. They are like the best friends that are also enemies. Frenemies, I guess that's what you want to say. It. Yeah. So we see that Dana is starting to get these text messages from the doorman in New York. And Rose is in New York. And the doorman is sending Dana real-time text messages letting him know what's going on with his wife. But his wife is supposed to be over there doing a presentation for August. Yeah. But Dana's telling August that she's at a Pilates class. And I'm like, wait a minute. Things are just moving too goddamn fast. Like, did something happen where there was a confrontation and we don't know nothing about it? Because why is Rose in New York, right? Running from Dana. <laughs> so I'm like, did Dana confront Rose? And Rose was like, okay, I need a break. I think Rose just left, left from Bridges and, and went to New York out of guilt. Well. That's what I think. I don't know. But then we see the housekeeper comes rolling in. Don't you love the reverse of the roles? <laughs> so the housekeeper um, keeper comes in and says, hey, yo, we got a problem in the wine tasting room. Bridget is down there. And they were like, it's Saturday. Yeah. Her day what off. What the hell is she doing here? Dana said, oh, she but coming she, over she, here. She come up here. To finish <laughs> off the crop. Because <laughs> you know she the one poisoning the vines. So they get down there and Bridget is in her bag. She is um drinking the wine. $1,500 wine. Yep. Toe up. Out of the mom's antique wine glass, right? So... August, the only thing that she can concentrate on is, please, for the love of God and all things holy, put that glass back. Because, you know, every time we touched those glasses when we were kids, our mom, well, my mom, <laughs> would threaten us to no freaking end. All, what she said, all barking, no bite. Yeah. Bridget was like, oh, no, I will not put this down because what I got to tell y'all, oh, it's worth the $1,500 wine and it's worth the risk. Of these daggone, this daggone glass. <laughs> she said, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to wait for my mom to come over. And I said, wait a freaking minute. So you came with to start all that disruption. I yeah. wanted to wait for your, your mom, mom to come? By that time, I would have yeah. worked your way. Like, you should have just waited for your mom to come before you came and got up. See, them rich people problems. Because you <laughs> you're not going to tell a, a hood person, I'm going to wait. No, because I'm going to be yeah, out you. Yeah, you ain't waiting my time. No. So then we see Auntie Melanie come around the corner because Dana was like, Buck, what you heard? I need an ETA on Melanie. Where's she at? I said, first of all, who the hell are you? Like, you have ETAs and eyes on everybody <laughs> yeah. except for the crop. Like, you. <laughs> so Melanie comes rolling in. And then at this point, this is where Bridget really pulls in the bag. And she's like, uh, raise your hand if you knew that our grandmother was in a mental institution in New York. <laughs> and everybody was like, like what, what? are you talking about? Nah, that ain't true. Yeah. So then Vanessa comes around the corner and she was like, because um, Melanie was like, who told you that? Vanessa was like, I did. I sure did. I took her to New York and I told her about it, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, hell, here you go. Then the power went out. Yeah. And I said, ooh, if this ain't a panic room experience right here, <laughs> can't get in, can't get out. So y'all locked in to deal with y'all issues, my. Couldn't have been more, be huh. look, God was like, y'all gonna deal with it today. Vanessa was like, we can't get out because the security system that I had upgraded to only works on the main circuits of the electricity. I said, first of all, 
what security system did y'all get put in y'all house? Because usually when somebody breaks into your house, they cut your electricity first. Yeah. So they go lock you into wherever. <laughs> so we're going to move forward a whole lot because it was a whole lot of fluff going on until we got to the nitty gritty and the good part. But what had happened was, like my husband said, they were sitting there forced to deal with their ish yeah. in one single setting. So now that we know that grandma is in a mental institution, why is she there? And of course, we heard from Vanessa that Melody had put mm -hmm. the mother in a mental institution because she killed the father indirectly. And I told y'all last week that would be... Ass. You did. You was like, nah, that don't nah. sound right. Nah. Like they putting something on that child. Yeah. Well, come to find out <laughs> what had really had happened was Auntie Melody, normal teenager doing teenager skit, came in at 16 years old behind all uh, um later than her curfew. Her mama found a joint. That's how old she is. It yeah, was a joint. <laughs> it wasn't a bong. It wasn't a blunt. <laughs> it was a joint. So she was like, when she saw the joint, she like went ballistic. Mm -hmm. And she slapped me across the face. She made me see stars. I fell out. And she raised her hand to slap me again. That's when dad was coming towards my way to grab her arm. She pushed him and he hit his head. And that caused him to have a brain aneurysm. And he died the next day. But what happened was when the police came to the house, the mama was like, you need to follow my lead. And Melody, of course, being a teenager, okay, you got the story about what happened to Dad. Let's have, let's let's, let's, let's roll it. it. She told the story and never mentioned the fact that she was the one who pushed him. She put it all on Melody coming home, causing him to have a brain aneurysm, and this was the guilt that she lived with yeah. her entire, entire life. Life, and I'm sitting here like, whoa. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's why she. Yep, yeah, that's why she screwed up. And like I told y'all last, it. told y'all last week, that that mama was the one that was pushing that BS on Melanie, and that's why Melanie is acting the way she acting now. So that's why when when Bridget came to the to the uh, Mr. Institute, her mama is still it mad. Is. Yes, still mad about the lie that she told Melanie, and now she mad because Melanie got got her secret. That's what I was like. Okay. Like what? So that's when I was like, okay, so what caused the mom and Melody said it, like you said, the guilt of her holding it in that she's the real reason that dad died is the reason that her mind My, started to yep. slip and the reason that she ultimately snapped. But because I promised to keep that secret between us two, mm -hmm. then it became my burden to bear. Yep. So I started running. I started mm -hmm. being out here and just pretty much running away from the harsh reality of what had happened right. but not being able to be truthful about what had happened. And then we find out that Vanessa won't even present when it all went down. So Vanessa was taking what time as if she was an eyewitness to all this happening. So this was new news to her that the mom was the one that pushed the daddy down and put on the bumper's head and, and get killed. So it's it yeah. Just lies and secrets, lies and secrets. Yep. And then she was talking about how basically the mom or the grandma stayed putting them against each other. Yep. So So then Melody was like, ultimately at the end of the day, I felt like I had to flee. Yeah. Like I felt like if I had to stay there, then I would be entrapped looking at this thing every day. But then this is where the resentment of but um Vanessa came towards Melody because how dare you leave me to take the care, care of, of mom, mom. Yeah. while she is going through and watching her slowly decline and not knowing where she was, who she was and being in a state of twilight for so long. Yeah. Then she was like when she was 18 years old, she knew that she could make some legal decisions. Um, for her mom because she came home one day her mom was walking down the street in her underwear and in her bra and I was like yeah at this point it is time to try to do something which kind of reminded me one day we came home from work right and beside our house is not a field but it's like a county easement so nobody can build there you're not really supposed to be on it but it's open so some people just tend to be up there one day 
And remember, you sit on that. You ain't see that car down through the easement? I'm oh, like, what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> but come to find out, this man was driving, and they don't know whether he snapped, went into twilight, or he had a was in like a diabetic comatose yeah. state. But he was down in the woods, and he didn't know where he was. Cool. And finally, they, you know, the police came down and whatnot because everybody thought maybe it was some kind of mischief going on. Yeah. Or somebody had did something. You know, in Richmond, everybody dumping a body in our mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he was drunk after finding until we found out the truth. I actually yeah. thought he was a drunk driver. No, but he was yeah. in, in a state, and I was mm -hmm. like, how, how scary is that? That your body is doing one thing, but your mind, mind is ain't doing there. something else. Yeah. So, a lot of the resentment with the sisters was elevated in that moment because how dare you go live your free life when you kill my father? That's mm -hmm. what she thinks. Mm -hmm. And now my mama is snapping because of the fact that you killed my daddy and now I'm stuck here with him. I'm like... Uh-huh. And there's with one her. common denominator in this whole thing that the sent mama. the ball rolling down the hill. Exactly. The mama. The mama. And the last. Yes. All to cover her, t to cover her tail. Because she went and, with the jail, and now she not in her right state of mind to help her daughters get back on track. To resolve it. So now the daughters is left to resolve all that bullshit. Now one got to believe the other. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So did we see that? Uh, <laughs> uh Vanessa finally um recognizes or re realizes that her glass is missing, right? So, you know, at this point, August and Bridget are kind of kiki because they're having these moments of clarity where, dang, this wasn't how I thought it was. Oh, dang. That's not... Oh, okay. So, as mad as I am at you, maybe I need to pull that in right now. So, they're having these kiki moments where they're just like... Like, they were little kids. And they're kind of hiding the wine glass from um, <laughs> Vanessa and like, <laughs> I ain't going to let her know I got it right now. That kind of stuff. So they're joking with Dana too. But y'all know Dana is mad with Bridget. Yeah, his feelings still hurt. About the wife. I don't blame him though. My, no, feelings, that's hard. my feelings would have been hurt too. I'm sorry. If I looked on the iPad and saw you with another woman, yeah, I'd be, yeah. Or <laughs> man, anybody. Yeah. So Bridget is um, joking with Dana, was like, ah, uh -uh, can you go and put some cheese in the fondue machine? I am not one of your pillow princesses that you get to <laughs> order around. And Bridget was like, what the hell's going wrong on? With you? And I'm like, Bridget. Did now, you? even the guilt of mind should make you think. Like what? Do now. he know something? Right. Like she's sitting over there like, what is his problem? Like even the guilt of mind ain't playing tricks on you saying, mm, maybe he. But that, but that runs in the family though. Yeah. <laughs> that runs in the family. Keep it back. Don't say Ooh, nothing. Oh, Lord have mercy. So. Then we get into August was like, you know what? I'm over it. I'm really over it. Y'all are causing me to have panic attacks. Like there is something about this family. And Dana <laughs> said, no, we curse. That's what's wrong with it. She said, no, we're not cursed. We are kings that don't do nothing but live under lies, secrets, and something else. Yeah. Basically, we bucked up by the stuff that we hold from each other, the secrets that we hold from each other, and the stuff that we just keep trying to cover up with lies. That's what's going on with us right now. Lord have mercy. So now you have everybody again coming together, trying to figure out what life is, and they having a kumbaya moment. And I said, this is going all too, too smooth. smoothly. Then Vanessa said, you know what, Melody? I can forgive you for mom. I can. I can forgive you for that. But one thing I can't I knew forgive you for, Dana said, oh, skit, uh, <laughs> is you sleeping with my husband. And I knew that was going to come up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is what really... The, yeah, the, the, the twist on it. Yeah. You went after my husband because he reminds you of our, our father. father. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to figure that, figure that one out, too. She said Reginald had... Our father's spirit, but he was nothing like our father. But then Vanessa, but why did Vanessa he looks like him? He does. Yeah. So now I'm questioning Vanessa. Yeah, why would you marry somebody yeah, that, that your... looks like your dad? Yeah. What the hell was going on in that house? Because real talk, they always say you go after what your abuser is. 
That's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. What the hell is that? Yeah. But Melody said that was not true. She didn't go after him at all. Long story short, Melody said, I didn't go after your husband at all. Your husband came to me and asked for it. Yeah. Gently. Gently. I said, oh, shit. So you about ready to get cut. <laughs> all this in front of the kids because yep. the kids can't run away. Uh, so we got a confession out of Melody that I'm still trying to understand this thing because she said that she slept with Reginald one time mm -hmm. and Bridget was conceived. That was before Vanessa and Reginald got married. Boom. Then <laughs> she <laughs> said, would you be surprised that I was sleeping with your husband when I was left to play mommy to your children, children when you left them? It's like, what? So Dana said, wait a minute, wait. what? You, you, you left us? You left us? Hold on, what? So then you see Auntie Vanessa still trying to lie her way out of it. I did not. I kind of temporarily took a break. Right. I went on a job. and You left them. Man, that reminds yeah, me so of yeah, a situation. A situation in our life where, yeah, we know someone that 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 left their kids. And they would and never, never own admit up it. to it. Would never admit it. And the kids would stand in their face and literally cry, just wanting them to admit. That you left me. You left me and my grandmother raised me. I didn't never leave y'all. Yes, you yes, did. Yes, you did. did. You may not think of it as leaving them because you probably came in, snuck in, seen them. Right. But you ultimately left them. So, long story short, um, Vanessa had went off to do her journalism. And she went out for, and I want to know the timeline. Like, was it six months? Was it a year? Because evidently the kids were really young because the kids don't even remember her being gone. Yeah. But here's my thing. I'm not trying to be funny. You create a perfect storm and then you're surprised when yeah. there's hell damage. Right. Huh? So you put your sister in position to be mother to your children while you out doing what you're doing in a household with your husband. In a perfect world, it shouldn't have happened. But in this real world, child, I can see how it happened. And it so did. So you left the cheese out for the mouse. Especially mm -hmm. since it had already. Well, I don't know at this point. Now, Re now, now Reginald should have not. Yeah. Yeah. Because still no excuse. No. But you put them in that situation. What you say? You put cheese in front of the mouse. You put the cheese in front of the mouse. And Reginald probably was all here for it because he had already tapped that ass. Yeah. And then you got on to um, Yvette talking about, so Bridget probably was conceived over at the house. So now this is why I'm questioning this thing. Because Auntie Yvette, when they had that little confessional moment when Vanessa was in that closet, didn't it sound like that Vanessa, I mean, Melody and um, Reginald was sleeping around around? Yeah. But she would look like she said, I think. So it's still a little mystery though. If you think, most likely, yeah, it happened. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. So now we got all of this going on. And but but like we was talking off camera, it's like I, I thank God for opening and putting this out here because mm -hmm. lies, secret, backstabbing. Stuff has been destroying our families for years. Yes. You know, you finding out that you got brothers and sisters when they grown. Or or you dated somebody and come to find out that they, they could be your cousins. Yeah, they could be your cousins. And yeah, it's just the, this family secret. That's, that was the model back then. What happens in this house stays, stays in this house. house. And even though they see that the bulls get still end up getting out in the streets, they still kept on to that same mentality. Sprinkle a lie on it. Yeah. Oh, she just looks like you. Or that was just your grandma. That was just your 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 your, your grandma, your granddaddy. You know, they didn't mean no harm by it when they touched you inappropriately. And that's all they knew back then. That's all they knew, yeah. And they so, said that too about mental illness. It was like, why is it that y'all keep lying to us and telling us that our grandmother is in Paris? Cause I kept saying, 
it took grandma a long time to get here yeah. after Rational died. Yeah, yeah. Grandma laid up there at, at 17 Oaks. But but um August, she really nailed it home because in the well, this is in the black community. I don't know any other community, but in the black communities, we're pushed to have babies. And yeah. and August was like, you know that I couldn't do, run out for this career and have a baby at the same time, but yet every single day you make me feel like skit because I haven't had a baby yet. When you had to leave us to pursue your career, now you're trying to put me in that same spot. And you know it's impossible. Yeah, you know it's impossible. And she said, it causes me anxiety yeah. because I can't measure up to what it is that I thought was a perfect mother, which was you. You, yeah. But come to find out that you ain't do nothing but tell a lie. Right. I said, what are you? But I looked at you and I said, how ironic. Vanessa left her children to be raised by Melody. Yeah. Melody left, left her, her daughter <laughs> to, to be, be raised by... by because then about Bridget, major dysfunction, man. So then Bridget was like, well, mama, why did you leave me? Like, and I, I felt sorry for Bridget because Bridget said, I feel like the outcast on every turn that every time something happens, I'm on an island to myself, like an outcast. Yeah. She said, you, Vanessa, Vanessa Grandma, August, Grandma, Grandma, and I'm like, Daniel, you don't know yeah. it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rose. And I say that is true. Like she is the collateral damage for every day. Mm -hmm. Unless she doing the crops, then that's your own burden to bear. But it might be the revenge. It could be. Like with all this skit she having to deal with. Like okay, so y'all don't want to pay attention to me, and that I exist, and I'm came was conceived through all these lies and deceit. So you know what? Let's go ahead and destroy this. But I don't think she did it, though. I don't. I don't think she did it. At this point, I'm more concerned with the family. Yeah, get the family. Get, yeah, <laughs> say, damn them crops and yeah. them grapes. Yeah, get the family back together. Yeah, that's the because that's the most important. Yeah, and but, like August was saying, she was like, this entire empire is on my shoulders. Yeah, and I need all of y'all to do it. But yet, all we have is a bunch of cracks that I am so afraid I'm just gonna fall mm -hmm. straight through. Yep. And go bankrupt while they're looking at the temperature move yep. on the barrels that has their next venture. And I said, well, hold on. But, How much money do y'all not have? Right. Because it's yeah, almost yeah. like in the pandemic, two weeks of being in the pandemic, yeah. businesses started tanking. Yeah, needing cash. I said, hold on. So how much money did you not have? Yeah. <laughs> you were not in the green, obviously, and now your slip is showing. <laughs> yep. Because it, you should, like they told us, have how much? Six months? Six months. Of income? Yep. As a Three business, to six months. As a business, why you didn't have two weeks of income? <laughs> but that's a whole other story. But I told I told you when we were talking off camera, I said, I'm glad that the own is showing this because most of the time we think dysfunction only happens in families that don't have money. Uh-huh. But they're showing us that, that dysfunction, family dysfunction doesn't have a dollar sign on it. <laughs> it's just it's just dysfunction and we've learned to just settle with it it's 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 the norm this this is how it's supposed to be done mm -hmm. and then like you said you get older and you got to get counseling for your for your skit you're trying to figure out why the hell you messed up and and they really you can't you for that right you're going to therapy uh-huh why do you have you, trying to you need to go you trying to figure out why you can't love your husband, why you can't love your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, only come to find out because your parents won't get along and they was faking it like, like, uh -huh. it like Reggie and, and Vanessa was faking it. For a while. Yeah. And that's what she told um, them because Dana was like, so was everything a lie? Like, what's yeah, going uh -huh. on? Like, when did y'all... And Vanessa said, it really took a while for me and Reggie to get on one accord where we mm. really, like... Came, became solid mm -hmm. and she said in that time we had Christian and Christian was kind of like our blessing like he was the cherry on top and, and, and I'm that, like that too it's like y'all already in dysfunction and, and you're bringing baby. more kids man Melody and uh, Martel but anyway people so, get mad when you say so that you, so Christian was supposed to fix everything but still like the boo skit is even worse yeah yeah and now Christian got to deal with it yeah well Christian just got it. Money. <laughs> yeah.
Christian don't care if the sun don't shine. <laughs> like Biggie Small said, more money, more problems. Mm -hmm. So then Bridget ends up having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her mom. Because, of course, everybody's having their individual times with their moms, which I appreciate. And Bridget lets her mom know that she is in love with a girl. And she wants to tell her. But she can't tell the girl because the girl is married. But it almost like she knew. She wasn't like shocked by it. I, she knew that her daughter was gay. Yeah. I don't, or yeah. bisexual. Yeah. I was like, cause she wouldn't like thrown back like nah. what? Nah. Yeah. So she was like, um, the only reason that I won't pursue this girl is because I don't want to yeah. be you <laughs> in a relationship with a married woman. Ooh. And I'm like, what the? I said, oh. But you saying all the right things. But last week, you pushed your boobs and your lips <laughs> up on the married woman. Yeah. yeah. Or was that the Patron shots? Like, what the hell? Uh, like, it's always like that cheating person that was in your life way back in the gap. Hey, Hopefully, you don't have them no more. Jamie Foxx all the right one. Tried all to right tell things. us. Blame it on alcohol. <laughs> while he over there in the sunken and place now. <laughs> so I'm like, what in the everlasting hell? Mind you, we're still getting this side shade from Dana towards Bridget, and Bridget is kind of like, what is his problem? Mm -hmm. Boo-boo. Just think, just let your conscience tell you. Like Ayala said, let out a deep yell. Shoot, speaking of Ayana, <laughs> they need Ayana to fix What's their life. Ayala. Ayana. I always <laughs> keep getting her name wrong. I'm like, whoa. So then the power comes back on. The grapes, the wine is saved. The temperature was like right there. Everything, the doors open up. Dana gets cell phone reception. The door, it was Rose. Rose said, listen. I need to stay in New York for a few blah, 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 blah. Dana ends up going over there to Bridget, snatching her phone or something like that. Some kind of way he saw her phone. And Bridget and Rose been texting and Rose is telling Bridget, thank you so much for the encouragement, the talk that you gave me with mm -hmm. the heart emojis and da, 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 da. So now everybody knows that something that went going on with Rose and God darn Bridget, I said, Lord, have mercy. But he didn't never put it out there, out there, out there, what he had going on. He couldn't. He couldn't. Because they snuck the cameras in her house. So now that's, a, that's another backstabbing right there. Yeah. But the cameras in her house. I said, that damn Dana. That damn Dana. So we transition where everybody is free to get out the panic room. And now they don't got lit on the wine. They singing karaoke. They dancing and whatnot. I said, okay, we got good vibes going on. Dysfunctional A family can get together, have a good time with some music wine. That's black people. That's, that's, yep, that's what we used to do. But you see Dana. Party over the BS. I said, mm-mm. Dana, Dana, mm-mm. Everybody having a good time. He was Dana, disconnected, yep. He, he over there <laughs> eating sub sandwiches that's uh, yeah. bigger than him. I said, Next thing we know, the housekeeper, um, Mrs. King. <laughs> I said, why you act like you more scared of the cops than black people? <laughs> yeah. Mrs. King, um, you have some police officers at your door. And I was like, oh, skit. It wasn't a dream at the beginning of the episode. They looking for Bridget. Dana said, she right here. I said, oh, oh no. Hell. <laughs> so August looks at Dana was like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? Oh, yeah. I went over there and I told Sean and Sean about it and on how she was distorting us and all this stuff. And August was like, what are you talking about? Oh, did you know that she knew for a long time that Reginald was her dad? You know, I kind of overheard that. On, I said, so August is like, what? what the, did we just get somewhere with yeah. this? So now they got Bridget taking her to the police car and you, of course her mama. It's fighting for her, like, get your hand on my, my bed. Yeah. Had that whole color purple moment. No, let, let <laughs> us stay. Let us stay. <laughs> Police officer don't push Auntie Melanie down. She don't hit her head. Yeah. Yep. And she don't went in the mouth. I thought yeah. that when we saw the preview of this incident, 
that it had something to do with her blood work and the reason that she keep having these fainting spells. Yeah. That was the reason she was on the ground. Yeah, because when they was in nope. the panic room, she started like blurring up a little bit. Yeah. So, so maybe maybe that kind of might have might have like forced it to happen, being pushed down, and the anxiety of her daughter being um mm -hmm. being locked up and just the, when the police. I'm not saying the police nah. nah that that was just the last straw. But that hadn't happened yet. What the convulsions? Yeah. Yeah, it happened when she. I'm saying that. Yeah, that was the catalyst for all for the convulsions and all that stuff. Oh that yeah, yeah, lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot on her all at one time. So here's what's gonna happen. This is my prediction. I don't do predictions too often. This is when they figure out what's going on with Auntie Melody. When oh, they yeah. have to take her to the hospital. Yeah. And they're gonna run everything but her big toenail. Yeah, and they're gonna say, "Here we go with these secrets again." And yep. And then they're gonna be like, "So did you know? Yeah, when I went to Africa." Da, da, da. And we start the cycle of lies, secrets, all yeah. over again. But we talking skits. Stuff happens to us, and I know y'all can relate, that you don't tell your family. Right. You keep it to yourself because you want to deal with it yourself. Mm -hmm. But they showing us. It doesn't work. That it doesn't work. I legit was having this conversation because... It, it don't work. I'm the older... I'm the oldest girl cousins. And <clears throat> it's a lot of us. A lot of us. But I'm the oldest girl. And my younger cousins plays no games with me. And I always told them, I said, if something was going on with me, I would never tell y'all. Mm -hmm. And they get so mad. And I'm like, because y'all worry about me too much. Like, y'all legit will crumble if something happens to me or if something goes on. And it's like, but, and I'm like, I can't tell y'all because I need y'all to continue living. But the show shows us that it don't work. It, yeah, I'm preaching to myself. Because eventually they're going to be crushed. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They gonna yeah. be crushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this is uh, yeah. Yeah. So y'all get down in the comments. Let us know what y'all think about this dysfunction tonight. Straight from the VA. <laughs> the dirty, dirty. With most dysfunction <laughs> breeds. Yeah. Two up. Two down. I love. I love.